Alrighty, let's see what's happening here. Okay. Ah, the internet says that I am live at this point in time, so let me see what's happening. <laughs> cool, Tracy's liking the video, that's very nice. So now, okay, fantastic. I'm trying to figure out how I can see comments. Ah, oh, how's it, Tracy? <laughs> can you hear me? That is my first question. So, and just ping me some um, hearts or some thumbs up or a yes that everything is okay i'm gonna this is quite freaky so i'm gonna try and see if i can look at both screens at once um so i should be live in divine soul page i should be live in the group and ash yay <laughs> awesome guys i'm so glad um i know there's a slight delay because i'm doing it on zoom because i want to share my screen with you guys later today so um there's going to be a slight delay, so I'm going to try and not make this too awkward and freaky, but um, let's see. Everything should be fine. So it's nice to see um, you guys online, and I'm very, very um, happy um, that you are here. I'm just closing off some other people chatting to me now. So let me do this. Awesome. Okay. So, so this is like super duper amazing for me. Um, I have, <laughs> I've been thinking this while I've been prepping for today and why, what I want to share with you guys and everything I'd, I want to um, communicate. And I have literally been figuring this out since last year. And I was quite surprised when I sat and I, I went back and back and back and back and back. And I was trying to figure out like when the universe said to me, this is what you're going to be. Um, working with or when it all started so it was very cool so I thought I would I would speak a bit um, about that and I'm going to tell you guys a bit more about um, this beautiful light work and medicine wheel work that I'm I'm now bringing into the world and how that all works and everything as well um, so I know there's quite a few new people who's not been on my site for very long and who haven't either worked with me personally or know me um, so basically just a brief I'm Yolandi and like I'm the owner of Divine Soul and um, the work that I do is really focused on helping light workers to step into their purpose and really own who they are in this world. And as I was prepping today also, I was thinking about the concept of light workers. So I just wanted to quickly throw this out here because the thing is for me um, that I think people have this weird idea that if you say you are a light worker, that you have to be in some kind of spiritual job. So you have to be someone who's um, a healer or a coach or a, or a whatever you have, that has to be your profession. And I just wanted to make it very clear that everyone who is in my tribe, everyone who, who, who has come to me um, for readings, um, who's worked with me, um, who is basically on my page, etc. Everyone is a light worker. Every single person who, who wants to be there to assist someone else in some way, shape or form, be it a human, a plant, um, an animal, um, the earth, whatever it is, there is, there is like the energy of light worker around you. Okay. So if you are there to assist any thing that is alive um, you are a light worker so it doesn't matter how you birth it into the world and what you do and if you are um, a spiritual healer if you are a receptionist if you are a hairdresser if you are a um, whatever you are if you're a waitress if you're a an office worker if you're a doctor if you're an architect if you're a lawyer whatever you are you are still a light worker and I just want to make that very clear because I want people to get out of that mindset of oh my god I have to be in that job to be a light worker it's not a it's not a job it's a way of being it's a way of living it's a way of connecting um, with the world and with everyone around you and everything around you and basically just it's working from a space of love. If you work from a space of love you're a light worker. That's it basically in a nutshell wrapped up. So for me the people that I work with, I want you to be more in your truth 
I want you to be more in your essence of who you are. And that's my whole mission is to get you to get out of the bullshit, get out of the stories that you hold, the ideas that you keep that is not true to your soul essence. Okay. So that for me is like really important. And that's what I, what I, um, <laughs> that's what I, what I share with people. It's, it's all about like you moving into that space. So now coming back to working with, um, with the whole concept of um, the medicine wheel and being a light worker and all of that type of stuff. So for me, this whole journey, um, I've been doing this work for uh, quite a few years now, probably I'm, I'm going on to six years now of like being a um, full-time healer. And I was last year and some of the guys actually watching was with me on this retreat where we um went to adam's calendar in um in pumalanga in south africa a very sacred place um and an absolutely um magical place i feel for for really connecting very deeply with mother earth and with with beautiful energies that's out there and the very first time so I went there with this beautiful group of people. They were absolutely amazing. Um, and I was shown while I was there by my higher self um, about how to work in the circle. And the circle was all about um, the instructions that I got while I was there. It was about we start in the north and then we move around the circle and we go to the center of the circle. And while I was thinking about this, I'm like, this is exactly like what, what this whole journey is about when you work with the sacred circle. It's about starting in the north and working through and ending up in the middle. Now, if you've ever watched my videos, if you've worked with me, whatever, um, this whole circle with the dot in the middle became almost obsessive. Like it's this thing that just the whole year this year, it's been there. I wanted to figure out like, why the hell am, do I keep on seeing the circle with this dot in the middle, the circle with this dot in the middle. And then eventually I um, had this beautiful encounter with a friend of a friend um, who studied sacred geometry and she was really into it. And she did before I left South Africa, a little workshop for a bunch of us. Um, and the first thing she does, did was circle with the dot in the middle. And I was like, okay, this makes sense. Um, I sometimes feel like, like I start seeing stuff, but I don't always understand. So it was exactly the same with the Adam's calendar stuff. You're seeing the stuff, but you don't really understand what it's about. And so for me, this whole thing was the circle with the dot is it's sacred geometry. Okay. And then I started, um, had this conversation with another friend and I was saying to her, what, what's the medicine wheel about? What is this about? And she's like, no, well go here, go check it out, read up there. And the minute I started reading up on the medicine wheel, now I'm myself not personally very drawn to, um, uh, shamanic like vibes and stuff. I love it, but it's not something that I've ever felt. I embody very strongly. Um, so for me, the whole thing was, uh, I, I started investigating what are medicine, medicine wheels about. And the more I started reading, it was really interesting because then I got to the space where this person was speaking about the fact that the medicine wheels came from Andromeda. And I've got a very strong connection with Andromeda. Um, for me, that's like my lineage runs back into Andromeda. And I was like, whoa. So if the Andromedans brought the medicine wheel to earth, there must be something in my history that with the work that I've done with that energy, um, that must, there must be some kind of connection. So I frantically started re researching medicine wheels and what it's all about and how it all works together. And um, it was really quite cool because then I got to learn about the Native American medicine wheels um, and the, the medicine wheels that they use here in Africa. And um, so it was really quite amazing to see how it all actually fitted in um, and how it all started blending together. So the whole thing with the medicine wheel is that it is a complete journey every time. So if you're thinking about like how we move around a circle, we start and we end. Okay. And it's this whole cyclical thing. So for me, the circles became so important because there's this whole element of 
cycles. So every time I go through a process in my life and I'm doing something, I'm completing another cycle. I'm completing another cycle. So every time there's a beginning and we end and then we get to reflect on it. There's a beginning, there's an end and we get to reflect on it. And then it's almost like you move up, you move up, you move up. Okay, so that's where this whole thing started when I started seeing that clearly and I started understanding it and I started feeling into it. I was like, whoa. But, and it's interesting because I mean, medicine wheels have been used for centuries. They're used to, um, you know, uh, like to d decide when to plant stuff. They were used in all sorts of um, spiritual journeys, etc. So they've been like going on for for yonks and for ages, and it it was really interesting. But they were all different. So depending on which hemisphere you were in, like if you look at the North American one versus the African one. Um, you know, the South African one, like they completely the opposite way around and they start in different spaces. So then I was like going, well, what is it that I need to learn about the medicine wheel? And how is it that I need to implement this in the work that I give to other light workers out there? So I, I posed the question and I said, okay, so, so I understand how everyone else in the universe has used it and I see what they do and how they link it to the earth and all of those type of things, et cetera, and to the cycles. But what, what is it that I'm going to be doing with this? And it was so interesting because then it was like, okay, how can I use this concept of the wheel and of the journey and of the spirals to actually start creating a process for other light workers to step into their purpose? Because my work, as I see it right now, is to help people to step into their purpose and really to get into the space of owning who they are. And I then started going, okay, well, what would I put into the medicine wheel? And once I started connecting, it was so interesting because it was, for me, the archetypes were really important. Um, it was really important to work with the energy of the cosmos. Um, it was really important to work with the elements. Um, it was really important to have a purpose to every single part. So what's in the north, what's in the east, what's in the south, what's, what's in the west. Like every single section had to have something that formed part of this process. And at the end of it all, we'd go to the center and we would then work with balance. Because in every single wheel, no matter where you or you always end up in the center and you get to that space of wisdom and balance and also the ability to almost like create this higher perspective and look back at things and at your journey so then it was like okay and then I started connecting in with that and I started channeling all the information that I wanted and it just felt so yummy and it was just absolutely amazing because it is what I wanted to do I wanted to be in that space um, of taking people through this journey. Um, so I've done a lot of work in the last few months also um, working with these things myself and actually seeing what does it do for me and how did it change my life and it was so bloody exciting. So when I started piecing it all together, um, it was so beautiful and I could see also how in every single section you could actually awaken your clear gifts as well because your ability and your intuition is also linked to the journey. So, you know, if you're in the north and you're using the energy of the shaman and you're working with vision, um, that's where your clairvoyancy comes in. And then you can move into your clear audience, your clear knowing and your clear sensing, all of those things. You basically um, just yeah, start putting that all together. So I got so excited and I basically created what I now call the light worker medicine wheel. So for me, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it and then hopefully everything is going okay um, with the feeds and everything so that I can actually share my screen with you guys as well so that you can have a look. So let me just quickly uh, go into my tech side of things here and just see if everyone else is able to see what's going on. Okay. So let me just see. I am now going to share my screen with you guys. How do we figure this one out? So uh, da, da, da. can I do this? More video mute. Sorry, guys, I'm just it used to be, there you go, so easy. 
So I'm going to share my screen now with you and then hopefully you can see what is going on there. So the whole concept here is basically we start in the north and we work through all of the areas. So in the north we've got um, the earth energy. So that for me was like, it was like really going in deep. This is where shadow work comes into play. This is where we delve into the darkness. So when you start a journey, um, especially when it's a spiritual journey and you're wanting to actually go through the process of um, transcending issues or fears or things that, that you're dealing with, like really hectic stuff, it's almost always that process of going inside and seeing what is it that I'm scared of? What is it that's holding me back? What is the shadow work that I need to do? And for me, the earth um, and the mother Gaia energy really represents um, like going inside, going within. Okay. If you think about what the earth feels like when you connect with the energy, it's like, you know, there's, there's the rocks and the caves and that deep, deep darkness that is within there. And if we go in there and we go with the light into a cave, we can start seeing absolutely beautiful things in there. And there's crystals and there's stalagmites and stalactites and all sorts of stuff. So for me, the start of the journey is about like really going deep, going into the darkness and then connecting with the energies of my mother Gaia and like earth. And it's about creating a vision and, and being able to see. So if you tap into the clear senses and the intuition side of stuff, it's about the clairvoyancy. Okay. It's about being able to go in and to see what it is that I'm needing to work with. Then once I move out of that, I basically go to the East, which is the next step. And that is where, the uh, elements are like it's the element of air. Um, it's about what's my truth. So, you know, I figured out like I've got all this darkness and stuff, but what is my actual truth? So, what is it that I am um, too afraid to bring into the world to let people see? And why am I obscuring my truth? And, and what, am I, what am I fearful of? Okay, so um, how am I allowing my relationship with my with my family, with society, with whatever, for me to basically stay small and not not be this this fierce warrior that I really am, so that I can stand in my truth. And then I started here um, connecting with the Andromedan energy as well, because for me Andromedan energy is warrior energy. Okay, it's the energy of um, like real light worker warrior energy. So it's absolutely beautiful. And it also connects very much to, if you think about um, like the divine feminine, uh, if we step into your warriors from the Viking ages and that type of thing, they were these fearless women, the Amazons and stuff. They were like really amazing and they could do anything that they wanted to. But because of so many societal things that's been taken away from us. Um, you know, as women specifically as men as well, it's like that ability to be in our truth and be fearless with our truth. So that for me is the next step that you then go into and you start listening. So you're using the clear audience there to start listening to the messages that you're getting from this warrior part of you that you're now activating and really working with. And once you move through there, going into the South, that's where things become softer and more feminine. So we're then working with the energy of flow. We're working with the energy of water. We're working with the, the archetype of the healer there. Um, so it is really about um, pulling back those pieces of my soul so that I can, I can see myself for who I am in that beautiful space, in that space of healing um, and just like creating beautiful flow and gentleness around um, because now that we've been in that heart, the male energy coming out of the warrior and back into the female energy again, um, just nurturing and loving and caring for yourself and really stepping into that energy. And then once you go through there, you're working again with the fire energy. So in the West there's fire. So that is about taking your power back. So I've healed the broken pieces. I've bring everything back in and now I'm taking my power back. So here for me, um, like priestess energy and the Pleiades, it just absolutely goes together. Um, every time I have awakened aspects of myself where the Pleiadians were involved, um, it was very powerful and it's all about taking your power back. It was really all about like stepping in. And this journey, especially this lightworker journey for me is about 
taking the energy of the cosmos, but also grounding it in with the energy of my Mother Gaia. So therefore, I wanted to, those really important cosmic energies needs to function here, but the, the, the foundation of it in the north is the Mother Gaia energy. Okay, we, we're rooting with her, and then we're bringing in all this cosmic wisdom and this like this energy of the cosmos while we're doing this whole journey. So once I've done this, claimed my power back, I basically step into the middle. So we step into the whole balance element, um, that Arcturian wisdom. So working with those cosmic energies, that it's the it's the archetype of the wisdom keeper. Okay, so this is where I start embodying my soul's truth. I figured out what it is. This is how I'm going. And this is where you get to, for me, it felt like you rise up from the ashes and you basically, this whole phoenix is what I saw. So once we, we get to the end of the journey, basically being able to rise up through there. Okay, so, and it's all about creating balance because also when I'm sitting there, I've got the ability to have that higher perspective. I can look at the journey that I've just been through. And that is where I then finalize and I end my journey. And for me, this whole Lightworker medicine wheel that I created is really about being able to use this process every time that you move to your next level, when you're up level. Okay. So it's basically find, finding out, okay, what's that thing that's stopping me? I do my journey. What's that thing that's stopping me? I do my journey. Because for so long, I always felt, I'm just going to go back into the normal screen and I'll stop this now. Um, let me just see if I'm still in here. I assume that's all still running. Cool. I seem to still be alive there. <laughs> okay. Because for me, the whole thing is for so long, um, I have felt like I've gone through so much stuff. I've had to learn this and I've had to learn that and I've had to learn that. And my whole mission was with creating this, um, this medicine wheel was to try and simplify the process, was to, to take the process and put focus into it. Because so often what happens is if we all of a sudden needing to up level or we needing to be in that space where we're going, I know I have to step up. I know I have to connect with my truth. I know I have to change something in my life. We have no idea even where to start. We have no idea even what we're supposed to be doing, where we're supposed to be going. And what I found was, very often I ended up going in one direction because I didn't know what to do. And there was no one that I could turn to and go, how do I manage this big change in my life? How do I manage wanting to become another version of me, this next version of myself? I have no idea how to do this. And that's what I love about the work that I've been given now. Um, it's about really understanding like how do we go through the process of up-leveling within ourselves, within our spiritual journey, with who we are, connecting more to our truth. Because the whole point is when you get to that center and you, you get back into the center of the circle, it's about understanding your essence. It's about really understanding your truth and being confident in it. Because I was thinking today during my prep time, while I was meditating and, and just being in that space, I, I got the question, who am I? And then I thought, I'm comfortable in me. I know who I am, but I know who I am because I've done the work and I've committed to doing the work. Um, and then I thought, so if I asked myself this question a year ago, who am I? I would have been, well, I am, um, you know, I'm Yolandi and I run this company and I'm a healer and I'm, I'm someone's mom and I'm someone's wife and I'm a, you know, I'm a daughter and I'm a sister. And, I, and, and then I thought, but that's not who I am. Who am I? <laughs> I am light. I am connectedness. I am love. I'm all of these things. And it's not just, these are not just words that I say, but these are words that I feel. These are words that I embody. This is how I live my life every day because it's my truth. Okay. So if you had to say to yourself today, what is my truth? If you had to have a conversation with me and you didn't tell me your job and you didn't tell me that you're a, a mom or a dad or a, a, a whatever, 
Like I want nothing to know about your physical circumstances, but I want to know about your soul. And I want to know about who you are at this beautiful soul level. What would you answer? What would you say today? Do you understand your truth? Do you know where your power lies? Do you know what your strengths are on a soul level? Okay, because I mean, we have plenty of strengths when it comes to the actionable masculine stuff and like getting jobs done and stuff like that. But what is your strength on a soul level? How do you touch people's lives? And how do you, how do you, how do you shine your light out there? What do you do to share that? Okay, because that is all about who am I? And for me, that's the thing that this whole creation of the medicine wheel that's what it's all about it takes you back to who am i okay and once i know who i am what do i do with that then because i then take that fierce knowing and that absolute confidence in myself my ability my ability to connect to the universe my ability to connect to other people um, and I take that into the world and I step into the world in that version. But I, I'm constantly bombarded and in conversation with people going, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know who I am. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. So for me, it's about your journey here is to find out who am I? And that's it. And once you know, it changes all the time though. That's the beauty of it. That's why the spiral is there. Because I thought to myself, who am I a year ago? Who am I a year or two years ago, three years ago, four years ago? Every year, there's been a new version of me emerging. Every year, there's been something new about me that's come up, um, which I love even more. And this is the process. We have to go through the spiral processes every single day to, to live in this life. But the problem is that we, it's almost like we can't be vulnerable. We can't, we can't show other people that sometimes we don't have our shit together. Sometimes that this is like an emotional struggle and there's darkness in me and there's parts of me that I don't like. Um, and you know, those shadow sides, etc. So, so we just all want to be perfect and we want to be light and airy and fairy and all that shit that happens. But it's not that the journey is full of tears. It's full of happiness. Um, it's full of wisdom. It's got all of those things wrapped in it. But for me, it was like, how do I take you on that journey to get there? So therefore, the medicine will. So for me, the whole thing is it's, it's a journey to balance. That's what it is. It's a journey to get back into balance. It's a journey to get back to your essence. It's a journey to step back into your truth. It's a journey to figure out who you really are. Okay. So that for me is really important. So I wanted to share that with you guys today because I'm so freaking excited about it. Um, and tomorrow what I want to do is I want to work with the energy of the archetypes and what do we learn about that? Because I look at the archetypes and I see it as a beautiful portal to the divine feminine. Um, and for so long, so many of us have not been in that space. We've been running with that masculine energy and just completely ignoring the divine feminine. And now is the time to bring those energies up so that we can merge it with the divine masculine energy as well so tomorrow we're going to talk about the archetypes and how do we use that and how do we basically connect with that energy but i just wanted to take a few minutes now to take you into that space of sitting in the i am space so if you can imagine yourself like those beautiful medicine wheels that they have in America with all the rocks packed out, um, all the beautiful medicine wheels we have here in England, all those sacred circles that we have here. And if I can take you to just go and be in that circle, in the center of that circle, and I just want to go and do some magic there with you. So if you have a few minutes, please spare them for me. And see if you can close your eyes. <sighs> and then we can go into that energy. Okay. So visualizing yourself now 
in a beautiful stone circle whatever stone circle you prefer if you like the smaller circles of the beautiful Native American circles if you prefer an African medicine wheel circle if you prefer a Celtic one one from England whatever works for you but wherever you are in the world right now I want you to be inside a beautiful circle. I want you to visualize yourself sitting right in the middle of this beautiful circle. And we're going to breathe in now. So we're breathing in for one, two, three, four, and hold two, three, four, and out two, three, four. And in two, three, four. Hold two, three, four, and out two, three, four, and in two, three, four, hold two, three, four, and out two, three, four. And allowing yourself to be in the energy of your special circle. Visualizing yourself now facing the north and just sitting in the energy of what the medicine wheel represents. We're calling in the beautiful guides, the energy of Mother Gaia. Inotiki alaramashe ote alaratanki alaramasho tokuri avata. And as you're sitting in the middle of this wheel, I want you to visualize yourself in six months' time. See yourself in the best possible space in six months time. See what you look like, see what you are wearing, and be in that space of what's happening around me in six months time. What am I doing? Who am I helping? How am I showing up in the world? Now there are various probabilities when we work with future projections of ourselves. But I want you to be in that space of, this is the best version of me. This is how I, from a heart's desire, point see myself. Even if none of those things that you're envisaging in six months time has happened yet, it's only a little spark within you, it's only a thought, a fleeting moment, but allow yourself to be in that energy of that future projection, to really be feeling and seeing. Imagine yourself having gone through a beautiful journey of discovery, of a journey of just really connecting with yourself, understanding yourself, committing to your growth and committing to your future. And just visualize yourself there in all your awesomeness with whatever it is that you are bringing into the world. However you are shining your light, being that beautiful light worker right now. And as you're seeing that version of yourself, tap into what the heart feels like in that version of yourself. I want you to focus all your energy on what that version of the heart feels like. Feel the lightness, feel the potential, the beauty, the expansiveness. Just tap into that feeling. And then take that feeling 
and give it a shape and a form. Whatever it is for you. It might be a beautiful crystal ball. It might be a flower. Whatever it is for you. Allowing that to become something tangible. Korea la rama shekura, saleria te kiamba, ete alara washe, korea vate, andia la randa kahia mate, o te rania sakava yala. And taking that tangible item now and handing it over to yourself sitting in the middle of the circle. Nuni anana oe anaya maya Eni anao ae anae Nuni anao mambai ananda ramba humma enao anna yi anonga wanda Eni anao unao anna ea handan and allowing yourself to just take that beautiful gift that your future self gave you keeping that safe within your being store it into your heart space right now The world is such a beautiful place filled with so much probability, so much potential. And all it takes for us is just to see one beautiful vision so that we can start creating a beautiful intention for ourselves. That vision that you hold in your heart right now, we seal that in for you today so that you can start taking those steps to embodying that going forward. I want you to thank your future self for that beautiful gift, that beautiful feeling, that expansiveness. Arisili chikiara soko latia laramaseki. Allowing yourself to come back gently, feeling yourself rooted within Mother Earth. Visualize yourself really stabilizing, growing those roots straight down into her, feeling yourself being completely grounded. And allowing your heart to stay in this beautiful space of potential today, tonight, as you move forward. And just feeling the magic that you hold within there. Kisia lara shoko sempiata ekia lara nosho evate aliaka madokoro sematiate kaviata. Sealing that all in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, cool. Just need to have a few sips of water there. Awesome. Okay, so thank you for joining me today. I really enjoyed having you here and um, it was awesome to see you. Uh, if you weren't able to watch the whole live, I will be sending out um, replays, posting it on the site as well. Um, yeah, and share with your friends. There might be some people that you know who might be interested in this work and what we're busy working with. Um, and I will see you tomorrow morning. Um, I have no idea what time. I think it's probably like 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock UK time. Um, but I'll post the time on there in the replay email that I'm sending out tonight. Um, I just hit a complete blank there. And then um, if you can't make that one, obviously perfectly fine. There will be replays of everything. So I just wanted to say it's been really incredible um, 
doing this with you guys and uh, and thank you for allowing me to to share my new creation with you and um, I'm so freaking excited for it so I can't wait to um, just share more about this in the coming two days that we have and um, and to see uh, how we go from here so I absolutely loved having you guys today thank you so much and we will connect again tomorrow so have a beautiful evening um, and enjoy <music>